Hello everybody, this is Pitch Cold Black here, and welcome back to the Skulls General Reviews, episode 56, in which today I'm going to be taking a look at another new series novel, The Dalek Generation. So without further ado, let's begin this review by taking a look at the presentation of this Doctor Who book. So for the cover itself, we have BBC Doctor Who, the sort of Matt Smith for the sort of new sort of Doctor Who logo that there is, um, that I think emerged that from like the depths of the 50th anniversary sometime in 2013 I think I could be wrong about that and then we have BBC Books, the Dalek Generation Nicholas Briggs and then for the artwork itself encased in these in this massive circle we have another sort of circle there another sort of circle there with a nice bit of explosion there a planet in the background uh, with some sort of, mm, sort of explosions and fire coming off of it with a Dalek there, Dalek there, some Dalek spaceships down there, bit of burst of something or other there with the Matt, with the Matt Smith incarnation of the Doctor taking centre stage. For the spine of this Doctor Who book, we have Doctor Who uh, in orange, set against orange, the Dalek generation, Nicholas Briggs, and there we've got a shrunken down bit of the cover, BBC Books. For the back of this Doctor Who book, we have that bit of the, the sort of cover art again, quote from the book, synopsis, Doctor Who, Doctor Who logo, a thrilling all-new adventure featuring the Doctor's Paper Matt Smith and the spectacular hit series from BBC Television, BBC, Fiction UK 699 barcode and various copyright guff there. The Sunlight Worlds offer you a life of comfort and plenty. Apply now at the Dalek Foundation. Sunlight 349 is one of the countless Dalek Foundation worlds. Planets created to house billions from economic hardship. The Doctor arrives at Sunlight 349, suspicious of any world where the Daleks are apparently a force for good and determined to find out the truth. The Doctor knows they have a far more sinister plan, but how can he convince those who have lived under the benevolence of the Daleks for a generation? But convince them he must, and soon for on another Foundation planet, archaeologists have unearthed the most dangerous technology in the universe. For the interior of this Doctor Who book, we have a penciled in price on a blank page, which is what I paid for this Doctor Who book, £3.60, a little over half of the original price. Then there we have BBC Doctor Who The Dalek Generation with a bit of the ink from that slightly printed onto there. Don't know how well that's going to show on camera, it probably won't. Sh there you go. You can just about see it just there. Um, also have a similar misprint in this, Prison of the Daleks. Um, also available from BBC Books, Plague of the Cybermen and Shroud of Sorrow. Don't really know if you'd call that a misprint, just an interesting little oddity. BBC Doctor Who, the Doctor Who logo, the Dalek Generation, Nicholas Briggs, BBC Books. Various copyright guff in the left hand side there. For Steph and Ben, to my two favourite human beings. And there we've got the start of this Doctor Who book. This is a 200 and 46 page long Doctor Who book spread across a prologue and epilogue no one prologue no epilogue and 16 core chapters and then for the back of the Doctor Who book we have advertisements for Plague of the Cybermen and an advertisement for the other book in this little trio of three Shroud of Sorrow and then there we've got some more blank pages at the back there with the presentation of this Doctor Who book out of the way with what is the general consensus and my own personal thoughts and opinions on this Doctor Who book. As for the general consensus of this 11th Doctor novel, it has an average rating of 3.73 out of 5 on Goodreads, with very mixed reviews overall, with many claiming it's amazing, many claiming, many claiming it's the middle of the road and average, and many people claiming it's crap. A very divided book overall. Do I agree or disagree with the general consensus? Let us find out. There are currently two full length new series novels featuring the Daleks Prisoner of the Daleks and the Dalek Generation, and both hark back to what are arguably two of the most popular classic Dalek stories. 
With Prisoner harking back to Dalek's master plan with the sheer relentless, relentlessness of them, and this novel going back to power the Daleks, with them being very sinister and manipulative. So I would say if you like power, you'll most likely get something out of this Doctor Who book. I would also say that if you like the Dalek invasion of Earth, you will also most likely get something out of this book, as the Daleks have a plan that is about as ridiculous as it is there. The premise overall I found to be quite interesting and rather excellent. With society delu deluded by the fact that the Daleks have rebuilt their world and helped them out, not anticipating the impending chaos that the Daleks have in store for them, and the 11th Doctor trying to convince them otherwise, with him being paired up with three kids, that want to go back in time and save their parents from the Daleks. The inclusion of the Dalek Time Controller and a Dalek Legislator I found to be in good inclusions in the book also, as I feel that they add some nice drive and, and gravitas to the story and act as good villains overall. One thing I didn't particularly like about this book overall is the humour levels. With the three kids at the helm of companionship, there is often a lot of pee jokes and childish humour overall, which I did find pretty goddamn annoying and hard to read. However, pushing past that, I did feel that overall I found this to be an enjoyable adventure with some interesting concepts and, uh, and premises to it, such as the Dalek Legislator. Not an amazing Doctor Who book by any means, and it's by far and beyond not as good as Prison of the Daleks, but it's still a pretty good Doctor Who book in my opinion, just nothing outstanding overall.